Hello friends. Today we will discuss about the alloy steels. So introduction of alloy steel. So alloy steels is a steel in which various alloying elements other than the carbon like nickel, manganese, tungsten, aluminum, copper and molybdenum etc. are added to obtain the desired properties. Generally these elements are added to increase the mechanical electrical, thermal, magnetic, or resistance properties. The main cause of adding alloying elements in steel are as follows. So first objective is to increase the hardness and wear resistance property. So this is the important mechanical property of the material that is the hardness resistance offered by the material for penetration, scratching, or impression or indentation. Then wear resistance, ability of the material to worn out, that will be called as a wear. And to resist the material will get resist to avoid the wear, that is called as a wear resistance property. So the alloying elements are added to increase the hardness and wear resistance. Second one is to increase the corrosion resistance. As we know, the mini materials when the carbon content is there, uh, they are suffered from the oxidation and reduction reaction whenever they are comes into the corrosive environment or moisture environment that will be comes under the rusting of the metal so to avoid that we want to increase the corrosion resistance or chemical attack of the material so for that also we are adding the alloying elements into the steel uh, to increase the resistance to abrasion and wear is another application or another important cause. Then to increase the ductility and machinability, the ability of the material to draw into the wire and uh, it should be the machinable or different machining operations can be performed. That will be called as a machinability. To improve the mechanical, electrical and uh, thermal properties of the material or the steel, the alloying elements are added into the steel. The so next one is the advantages of alloy steels. So the alloy steel has a greater strength at elevated temperatures. Then alloy steel has a high hardenability. The next one is a, it has a improved ductility and cracking. Then higher elastic ratio and endurance strength. Then it has a better machinability at high hardness. Then it has a less uh, internal stresses are induced in the steel. That is uh, whenever alloying elements are added. So it can be effectively work at a different operating condition or pressure and loads. So these are the important advantages of the alloy steel. That is a greater strength, high hardenability, improved ductility and cracking, high elastic ratio and endurance strength, better machinability at high strength and less internal stresses. Uh, next point is a uh, uh, limitations of alloy steels so it has a higher cost than the plain carbon steel because of alloying elements are added so the cost of the production will go to increase then care should be taken during the handling that is another limitation of the alloy steel then uh, there will be the tendency to have a retain austenite so whenever uh, there uh, there will be the alloying elements are added into the steel so there will be the chances of the formation of the retain austenite during the conversion of the uh, phase austenite to uh, perlite, bainite or martensite. So uh, this will cause the reduction in the properties of the steel. Next one is a certain grade shows the temper brittleness. Brittleness is also there. So temper brittleness is the problem also can be arises in the alloy steels. Next is the effect of alloying elements on the properties of the steel. So the solid solution strengthening and hardening is the first effect. So alloying elements are the soluble in ferrite. They form the solid solution with the ferrite. So the solid solutions are harder and stronger than the pure metals. 
thereby increasing the strength and hardness of the steel so here on uh, x axis you will you will see the alloying elements in alpha iron that is the weight percentage of the alloying element starting from 0 to 24 shown in the diagram then on y axis you can see the hardness of the material which will represent the strength mean so it will starting from 0 to 240 in this diagram so you can see the different types of the materials so that is the whenever chromium is added tungsten vanadium molybdenum nickel manganese silicon and phosphorus so here whenever we add the slight amount of phosphorus silicon manganese and nickel then there will be the tremendous increase in the hardness value as you can see in the graph then uh, whenever we add the molybdenum vanadium tungsten and chromium so there will be the again increase in the hardness of the steel with respect to the more percentage of addition of the alloying element so the hardness increases in the slightly less as compared with the phosphorus silicon and manganese but it will gradually increase with respect to the alloying element or the addition of the alloying element then next is the formation of the carbide so some alloying elements combine with the carbon to form its carbides so the alloy carbides so formed increase the hardness and wear resistance so chromium titanium vanadium then tungsten manganese etc are added then there will be the formation of the carbide next one is effect is the formation of the inclusion that is oxides so usually deoxidant are added to remove the dissolved free oxygen from that the steel so these are deoxidations combined with the oxygen to form oxide inclusions so for example aluminum silicon chromium manganese etc are the elements uh, which causes the formation of the inclusion or oxides the next one is a formation of intermediate compounds so the sum of the alloying elements forms the intermediate compounds with the iron so these compounds improve the wear resistance and other mechanical properties so the chromium vanadium tungsten then nickel silicon etc are added though so the effect of these addition will form the intermediate compounds which will improve the mechanical properties as well as the wear resistance of the alloying alloy steels the next one is a shifting and lowering of critical cooling rate so the different alloying elements have different critical temperatures so the ferrite stabilizers raises the eutectoid temperature a1 while austenite stabilizers lowers the eutectoid temperature a1 for example molybdenum titanium ferrite stabilizers then manganese nickel austenite stabilizer so this will uh, lower down the critical cooling rate or shifting of the critical cooling rate next one is a change in the volume during the transformation so the changes in the microstructure results in the change in the volume of unit cell so the alloys are added to reduce the volume impact so the examples are chromium nickel silicon manganese molybdenum vanadium chromium nickel phosphorus silicon etc then other effects so beside those mentioned above alloy elements are added to the improve the corrosion resistance grip strength etc then the properties and uses of the alloying elements so first is a carbon addition of the carbon increases the hardness and strength then it increases the machinability second one is a addition of the sulfur it forms the manganese sulfide that is mns which is hard and brittle in nature then manganese sulfide provides a cheap formation and hence increases the machinability next is of addition of the phosphorus that is the p it dissolves in ferrite it increases the tensile strength and hardness then it is a solid solution strengthener it forms the iron sulfide that is fe3p which is hard and brittle in nature it also increases the machinability next one is the silicon that is a, it is the ferrite solid solution which increase the strengthening then it improves the ox oxidation resistance it reduces the hypothesis losses it increases the toughness of the material 
then the manganese it combines with the sulfur present in the steel and forms the manganese sulfide and it improves the machinability then it dissolves in ferrite and improves the strength and toughness it lowers ductility if present in higher percentage next one is a nickel so it is a ferrite is a solid solution which strengthening the steel then it dissolve in the ferrite it increases the tensile strength and hardness increases the corrosion and oxidation resistance it austenite stabilizers and lower critical temperature it reduces the coefficient of thermal expansion next one is a chromium so it forms the chromium carbide which increases the hardenability it increases the wear resistance it increases the corrosion and oxidation resistance next one is a titanium it is a strong carbide former so it prevent the localized precipitation of chromium carbide next one is a tungsten w so it increases the hardenability it forms carbide and increases the wear resistance and then it reduces the decarburization next one is a molybdenum mo so it increases the hardenability it makes the grain finer it forms carbide and increases the wear resistance it reduces the decarburization next is the vanadium so we it uh, promotes the fine grain structure it increases the hardenability its properties are similar to those of the tungsten and manganese next one is the cobalt co that is it reduces the hardenability it improves the strength it promotes the fine grain structure it improves the heat resistance next one is a aluminum al it is used as a deoxidizer it promotes fine grain structure next one is boron so it increases the hardenability and it improves the wear resistance and tear resistance of the steel so these are the properties and uses of the alloying elements whenever used in the steel so thank you for the watching the topic alloying elements and effect on the steel